Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the uh, Tavis America Pro Life webinar with the title Automated Planning and Scheduling During This Pandemic of COVID-19. Welcome to all of you guys. Uh, it truly is a pleasure to having you on. This truly is a global webinar as we have participants uh, that are joining us throughout the world. Uh, and uh, so we're, uh, we're glad that you were able to connect with us. My name is Michael Thiessen. I'm the sales manager here at Tavis America, and I will be uh, monitoring and moderating this particular webinar throughout. I'm also joined by my colleague, Marty Chapui, who is also here and he will be, he will be presenting here shortly. A couple items before we start with the informative portion of this uh, particular webinar, a couple things up front. Uh, we will have our webcams on only for the beginning and for the end. This is mainly to assist with uh, bandwidth or bandwidth issues uh, because there's so much traffic obviously right now going on with all these different uh, medias that are going out. Secondly, we encourage you to ask questions throughout this particular uh, webinar uh, since this topic is very interesting and very informative. Use the question panel on the right side of your screen and shoot us questions all throughout the webinar if you like. Um, and uh, we will cover all of these questions at the end of our webinar. And hopefully we'll get to, we'll get to all of them uh, as we have them. I hope you'll find this information very resourceful and informative as we're all finding ourselves in the midst of this pandemic and uh, in our business lives, uh, things have been turning upside down. So hopefully you find this interesting. And without any further ado and much talk for me as moder moderating it, I will hand it over to Marty. Marty. Thanks, Michael. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've uh, been in the manufacturing industry for over 25 years and I uh, pretty much grew up with it at home. My dad was a tool and die maker and had a shop on our small farm. Uh, I took an apprenticeship out of high school and then I've been furthering my education ever since. Manufacturing, project management, and leadership. Uh, I've successfully implemented uh, an MES system in an FMS cell and saw the benefits firsthand. Uh, it's quite impressive, the increased throughput you can get, uh, optimizing the resource utilization. And I'm coming from a resource management role, so I can truly appreciate uh, the tools that ProLice has to offer in manufacturing. So enough about myself, uh, I'm gonna turn off my webcam here to save some bandwidth, and we'll get started on today's topic. We'll look at first at the agenda, and today's topic will be automated planning and controlling. And the first thing we'll look at is the target markets, uh, ProLice uh, targets and the industries that we're involved in, and what benefits uh, ProLice can offer in manufacturing. Next, we'll look at the process, and just to see how ProLice can facilitate the manufacturing processes. And of course, how important and a major role that today's topic of automated planning plays in manufacturing. Also, we'll look at planning. This is our main topic, uh, topic, and I think this is quite likely why most of you joined us today. We'll look at resource management by skills and automated planning. And just keep in mind that resources are not only the equipment in your shop, but they also include the people in your organization. That's very key as we go through today's webinar. And then finally, we'll conclude with a question and answers period. And we encourage everyone to send your questions, as Michael already mentioned as well. Type them in the chat, and we'll be happy to answer them at the end of the webinar. So that being said, let's get started. We're going to look at the target markets, the industry, and really ProLice is focused on the planning of a single part production. And that, that could be applied in uh, mold manufacturing, in model making as well, and dye manufacturing. 
And at ProLace, we have 25 years of experience in the single part production planning and a very in-depth understanding of the manufacturing processes. And this allows us to offer process knowledge to your company, uh, implementation services, and also guidance and support. So what are the benefits of ProLice in these industries? Well, first of all, we'll look at the central overview and the connection of all of these resources, the orders, employees, tasks and operations, the machines and suppliers. Again, these are all resources that are connected to a database and really has a transparency of information. Also, a huge benefit is tracking the manufacturing costs. So this considers the hourly rates and the time spent on tasks, and it gives you a clear overview and allows you to monitor your actual costs. So, it, of course, that leads to reducing costs and increasing profits. And next is the quality, the control over the quality. We really make sure that uh, we have all the information and a predictable quality outcome is so important. The root cause analysis, uh, we have all the tools here that, that allow us to get to the root cause of quality issues and it minimizes all of the, the uh, quality issues that are repeats, especially coming from a, a trio point of view. You can really nail down which quality issues are being repeated all the time and find solutions to avoid those. And of course, the increased transparency really allows uh, on-time deliveries because of the flexibility of manufacturing as well. And of course, customer satisfaction and repeat customers because a happy customer always comes back. So what does the manufacturing process look like? Well, let's have an overview of a process here. So you can see that the processes are actually very complex, and this applies to die, molds, and models. And the biggest question is, how long will it take? Single part production, how long will it take for every process to, or every part to get through the design, the cam, the manufacturing, the assembly? And at the end of all this, we could tie it together with controlling it with uh, key performance indicators and evaluation, allowing us to optimize our processes. So processes, our ProLace is really integrated from the beginning of the process, the, the quote, right to the end of the delivery of the finished product. And typically in the past, this was done with Excel sheets, but we all know that that doesn't always work well. It's a lot of effort in running uh, sheets from department to department. You're prone to errors because your sheets may be out of date. You forgot about some dependencies. You can't clearly see bottlenecks. They're not evident until they really they happen, and then your schedule is behind. So the strengths of ProLace in this process is the transparency of information, uh, preliminary planning at a high level for feasibility of orders, and seeing if we can add a spontaneous order, if it's feasible or possible. Maybe you can't you know, uh, produce the order in time, you have to decline it or outsource it or propose a new delivery date to the customer. Sometimes a customer will be happy getting it a little bit later, but an accurate delivery date. So this, this all ties in. And then of course, detailed planning is what we'll focus on today, the automated planning at a detailed level. And this uh, takes into consideration all aspects of manufacturing dependencies and bottlenecks and it's all real-time information again and your bottlenecks become transparent ahead of time so that you can actually realize your schedule and it's really important to realize that ProLace is not an island solution we realize that a lot of companies already have softwares in place whether it be for shop floor management systems or tool management softwares your SAP, ERP, and we can connect your current software infrastructure to ProLace with many interfaces that are already available with some of our partners, or we can develop new interfaces if required. So during this webinar, we'll focus on the automated planning at a detailed planning level. And this really allows for easy schedule recovery with minimum effort 
as your resource capacities fluctuate. Hey, Marty, sorry to butt yeah. in, but no uh, let, let's be realistic here. Uh, I mean, in, we're all finding ourselves in this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, with this pandemic, this, this uh, virus that we have, this COVID-19, really is affecting this entire DNA of our, uh, of our industry. I mean, it has infected every single aspect of what we're dealing or what our customers are dealing with uh, all throughout their entire process. I mean, you just talked about all of these different processes and I can only imagine all of our listeners that are there, they have realized that this particular virus has really affected the overall process, what's going on in these industries. I mean, uh, if, if I just think about all of these clients, they have multiple different shifts and they have to, at a moment's notice, go from a single shift production to multiple shifts and how to manage all of this. And, and not to think all of them have machines available. And some of these machines currently, they're potentially even uh, standing still. There's no production going on because they're, they don't have enough people available. So all of these resources that they had beforehand in machines and people and all of this, they got all affected by this, this pandemic. So what does ProLice, can ProLice give a vaccine essentially to inject into this entire process and give an overview so that the entire process of a company can be healed and can be, uh, can be ready again in, in order to monitor all of this? Is ProLice capable of doing this? No, Michael, that's a, a great question. And yes, they, I'm very, uh, it's such a heavy load to be able to handle right now with the pandemic. And it really is uh, a solution for ProLice because I truly believe that ProLice is a remedy for a situation like this, allowing us to have a clear overview of our, our different, uh, you know, scenarios for capacity leveling and uh, reduced workforce, uh, reduced skills. And that really brings us to this uh, slide here where we're looking at the requirements for automated planning because automated planning is the solution for this. And there's really three requirements to automated planning. The first and most important is standardization. And we all know that we get a bill of material with our design, whether it be a mold, die, or model. There's always a bill of material that, that has all the parts that need to be put in place and assembled for a finished product. And there's different material properties. Obviously, they'll be manufactured differently. And in the end, we'll have a total finished product, whether it be the mold, die, or model. And here we, you could see that we have uh, five parts and it's really hard sometimes to understand. It's a struggle. Even though they're, they're different parts in the end, they're very similar. And similar parts can be really uh, categorized and classified into different classifications of parts. So we can analyze the parts and look at the similarities. So here we see, yeah, part one is on its own. That's the, the green rectangle. Part two and part four, or the triangle that we see, are very similar and will share the same manufacturing process. Again, single part production. That's uh, the focus for ProLice. And we also see that part three and part five are in the same classification. So if we go through for the first requirement of standardization, we take the bill of material, we look at the similar parts, and we pool them in part classifications. So now that we understand the standardization, let's look at the second requirement for automated planning. Here we have the planning templates. So the, the templates for planning uh, really coincide with each part classification. And this is what a uh, big step to allow ProLice to automatically plan detailed leveling. And within the template, you have the milestones that need to be hit. So obviously, you know, your design being completed as a milestone, your machining being completed, assembly completed, 
and so on until you get to your delivery. Also, we have many tasks within a template here and the tasks and operations that need to happen to complete the part, whether it be receiving the material or you know, rough machining, finished machining, assembly, hardening, all these processes are input into this template. And these two templates create the planning template that we need to be able to do the automated uh, planning at a detailed level. And the benefits of these planning templates, obviously, is to have every step for single part manufacturing in the process with the milestones that are you know, corresponding to the task. I know it sounds a little bit complex, but when you look at the, the layout of it, it's really quite simple and it can be broken down to each level. So last but not least, let's look at the third requirement for automated planning. Here we have our template structures. And our template structures are tied together by a unique process ID. And this process ID is actually your internal identifier in a company. You can have a certain uh, nomenclature for them specific to your process or to your company. And this could be applied right in the bill of material on each bill of material item during the design, or it could be applied in your planning process within ProLice on every bill of material item. And this really connects your part classifications and your planning templates. So this is key. This is where your manufacturing processes has the is built up of the, the planning template, which is a milestone template and the task templates. So you can have different scenarios for your manufacturing. Obviously, you might have some three axis for roughing, some five axis machines for finishing, uh, external resources for heat tree <clears throat> or welding, whatever it might be for external. I know we don't like to weld in this trade, but it happens. Uh, so really, that gives you an overview of the resources that will be required. And then we drill down to resource capacity from there. And it's important to understand, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but the resources are not only your equipment, but it's also your people, you know, the machine operators, the assemblers, the project managers, everybody in your organization, even your suppliers, your external resources, uh, material suppliers. So it's, a, it's very important to understand that for today's webinar. And of course, with the COVID-19 impact, we have uh, reduced uh, resources, whether it be you know, reduce work hours or people uh, off for sickness and whatnot. So just a quick re review of the requirements. First, we had the classification of parts, planning templates, and process IDs. So planning becomes very automated in ProLice when all of these three requirements are met. So let's look at how this is processed automatically in ProLice. We're gonna walk through the manufacturing of an injection mold and its components here. So first, you, the design issues the bill of material. We're all familiar with that. And you can see here we have the part classification of type one. And that, that's in this case here, it's a mold clamping plate. But there's one on the top and one on the bottom of the mold. So even though they're not quite uh, identical, they have some varying features, they'll still have the same process when it comes to manufacturing. Same resources uh, required. Uh, just a little bit of maybe different programming and things of that nature. <clears throat> and they all adhere to the milestones. Here you can see the start of machining and the start of assembly. So once the machining is complete, then the milestone of start assembly will allow to release the work for assembly. And here we see uh, type 2 part classification. And why do we have part 2 or type 2? Well, Obviously, there's a different process here in place. It's a more complex piece, requires more machines, maybe some gun drilling and different operations like that, blanchard grinding, whatever it might be, we could insert into this template. So when we get a similar part in the future, we can apply this template through a process ID. And of course, we have a type three part classification, again, has a different process. Every different process for the single part production will have its own template and its own part classification 
that connects it with a process ID. And of course, we have we keep going here. We have different processes for the, the mold shoe. And of course, again, different for the mold inserts. And at the end of all of this, uh, we also have the purchase components that could be part of these templates to make sure that the parts are in the shop before the assembly starts. Uh, that's very, very important as well because you can't start assembling without parts there, you know. And at the end of it, we'll have a complete finished product. So let's look at how we plan the required resources while respecting capacities and capabilities, which in ProLife's capabilities are skills. And it's important to understand that skills are can be applied to equipment as well. But in this case, we're looking at an assembly team and we'll touch on that later. So the, we're looking at the skill of this assembly team. We have 10 workers right now and they all have a certain basic assembly skill. So these 10 workers are all capable of doing basic assembly. And as well as a basic assembly, we have five workers here that have additional skills. Three have spotting skills, two have polishing skills, and then there's welding and texture repair as well, which these skills are kind of uh, scarce in the industry. There's not a lot of people coming up that have these skills. So it's very important to make sure that uh, we address the, this properly and apply the skill of each individual person to the specific task that needs to happen. So if we have a texture repair task, it makes no sense to put a basic assembly skill to that task. We'll make sure that we, we have our texture repair skill resource to be able to assign to it. And this really helps in the shortages and the constraints of the skills, especially right now we have a reduced workforce uh, with the COVID-19 and it's very important that we understand who can do what and to make sure that we, we are within capacity and we don't have bottlenecks occurring because of it. So how can we manage these skills within ProLice? Well, we're gonna go through this example together here where we have our 10 workers and you can see here that three of them are possible to go to spotting and two of them are possible to go to polishing. So if we look at this in total and basic assembly, we have in this week, because we have uh, either a short work week or a holiday on Friday, we have a maximum capacity of 320 hours available from these 10 workers in basic assembly. But we also have the possibility of having three of these workers go to spotting while taking away from the basic assembly. And the polishing, we have a possibility of 64 hours with two workers that can that possess the polishing skill. So let's look at Monday here. On Monday, we have 40 hours exerted for basic assembly skills required. This is the, the work that needs to happen. And spotting, we can allocate 24 hours. We have three workers able to, to do spotting. And also in polishing, we can allocate two workers to, to polishing on Monday. Now, when Tuesday rolls around, we have too much basic assembly work. We need to keep everybody in basic assembly. So now the five employees from the spotting and polishing will work in basic assembly, giving us 10 workers there. On Wednesday, we require one worker to be in spotting and one in polishing. And you can see here where we're over capacity because we, we only have the possibility of having 64 hours of basic assembly because we shifted two workers out of the basic assembly to do polishing and spotting. When we look at Thursday, we have two employees doing polishing, but we're within the capacity now uh, for the basic assembly. And when it comes to Friday, we still have some work to do and we have nobody there because of reduced uh, work hours, let's say. So all of the red here is actually over capacity in this schedule. <clears throat> so how can ProLice handle this capacity issue? Well, first of all, we're, we're gonna look at the ProLice, uh, the, the milestone logic that's used, and that is truly the answer. 
if you look at the blue bar here, this is an allowable range to be able to get the work done before the next milestone, to, to actually meet the requirements of that milestone. And this is done considering resources and skills available, of course, and always respecting project milestones. If it can respect milestones, then we, we need to look at that, maybe moving the milestone out. But it's made very evident in ProLice where your scheduling issues are. So here we're, we're looking at uh, two parts. We have an NC programming task, roughing and finishing for these two parts, a trim steel and a clamp plate, just for example. Well, you see, if we try to schedule it as soon as possible, then we have an overcapacity, and we're only looking at the roughing machine at the bottom here, where you see the, the bar chart. And you can see that we're over capacity. So this here, this schedule will not work. It's not possible because the machine can only only has one spindle and can only do one job at a time, right? So to be able to, to level this capacity, what ProLice does is it looks at the, the milestones and it places the tasks here one after another and levels the capacity out so that that roughing machine is now not over capacity. So you can see it spread the work out and this would even allow it to insert additional work, whether it be uh, you know, an engineering change or whatever it might be a re request from the customer. But it actually gives you a little bit of flexibility because there's some wiggle room on those blue bars to be able to, to fit some work before and still push those out a little bit. So when we think of the last slide and the example of the workers, really what it's gonna do is take some of that work and maybe shift it out to the next week or start it sooner so that it has that flexibility. So as you can see now, the, the roughing machine is within capacity in this example and the time, start times have been adjusted. So it's very powerful during a situation like we're in right now with COVID-19. As the resources, uh, calendars are changed, you know, the availability changes, the capacities change, then we can just, with one click, we can make this happen to level out the capacities and stay within our schedule. So let's see what else ProLice has to offer. Here's a look at uh, the ProLice, the interface. And so far, everything we've done has been abstract. I realize that with uh, charts and whatnot. And we've covered some planning. These are the planning apps here. But everything that we've talked about so far in today's webinar, we're gonna jump into the software. And I can show you in about 10 seconds for everything that we've talked about so far. So let's do that. Let's jump into the software for a second. And here you can see that we have a small machine one, small machine two, and the tasks are all stacked on top of each other, creating an over capacity uh, schedule. So here with the one click, we can look at prioritization too. There's a little bit of uh, options there that you can look at. And with one click though, you can see that we've leveled out capacity. Now the machines are full and not over capacity. So that that's really, uh, you know, it shows you how powerful and quick that ProLice is and how it can be done. And also to mention, ProLice is a, a modular concept. Uh, every graphic interface is user specific. They can be specific to roles uh, or even within the same role. Uh, if you had two different uh, employees, uh, they can have their, their visual display customized uh, however they like. And another very powerful tool here with ProLice is the ability, it's compatible with your smartphone or tablet. And that's really today's go-to technology. And there's no need for supercomputers. You know, it's a client that accesses uh, a database. So you don't, you don't need a very powerful computer uh, to run ProLice. And you can see the information from anywhere and it's all in real time. Uh, it's at your fingertips. You know, if, you, if you're a manager and you're on vacation and you just want to check up on your department, you can do it right from your phone. Even if you're on the beach, you know, it's so powerful to be able to be uh, global like that, to be able to have that flexibility. And there's also, as you can see on this on the display here, 
there's many, many extensive uh, functions and apps that Prolace uh, can utilize. Logistics are in there, quality management, uh, procurement, the controlling of your schedule, document manager. That's just to mention a few. There's, uh, we'll get into these. We don't have enough time today to cover all these topics or all this material, but we'll have more upcoming webinars and we'll get into detail on some of these topics. So let's add some credibility to ProLace. Who's utilizing ProLace? Well, you can see here, these are current customers, some of the current customers, not all of them, that have uh, successfully implemented ProLice over the past 25 years. And you can see it goes right from a small business uh, on the left-hand side, you can see to medium businesses in the center. And then we've got large companies and even OEMs. Uh, you know, ProLice is really for, for anyone who's manufacturing single part production. And that's really, you know, to drill that home, the single part production is the, the strength of ProLice. We also have uh, Toyota in North America and Kentucky. That's our first implementation in North America. And we recently completed the implementation there. So it's starting, uh, people are starting to see the value now in North America as well. So it's coming over here now. And uh, Michael, I, I'm just going to check in at this point and see if we, if you have any questions to share, anything that came in. Uh, Marty, actually, yes, uh, quite a few questions actually came in. Um, uh, so it was definitely an interesting uh, uh, webinar that uh, came across. One of the uh, people that are attending asked the question, how does ProLice know when employees are not available? Can you answer? That? Yeah, absolutely, Michael. Uh, there, There's a couple of options there. You can interface to your work uh, workforce management software, whatever it might be, Kronos, or there's, there's so many out there to mention. But it can actually have a live interface with ProLice and update the resource calendars as they fluctuate. Uh, there's also the opportunity to do all of this within ProLice. And in ProLice, you can adjust the, the resource calendars as they change. And then after you change the resource calendar, you can do an auto scheduling again. And with one click, everything's applied for capacities there. Okay, okay. The second question that came in, it's, it, uh, you talked earlier about this part classification, and the question is, how is the part classification established, actually? Well, the part classification is where uh, ProLice works with your company, and we can look through a bill of material, look at the parts in 3D, the different features on it. This is all part of the implementation services. And it helps us to uh, to put you on the right track and also provide some process input. And that that's really, it's a collaboration between your company and ProLice. And that's how we put it all together to classify the parts. Okay. The third question that came in here uh, earlier uh, had to do with when you were going over the automated scheduling. And okay. uh, this person was asking, uh, in regards to the automated scheduling, what if there is no possible solution that is available because of lack of resource capacity? That's the uh, first question there. And the follow-up question was, how can this be potentially handled in ProLice if there is no solution available? Okay, well, there's different tools available within ProLice and the controlling that allow us to, again, we can change the resource calendars. If maybe we can apply some overtime, uh, increase the, the resource capacities, right? Uh, maybe add a weekend shift, whatever it might be. And if that doesn't address the schedule, then obviously we, we're gonna have to look at uh, maybe adjusting the milestone dates to be able to fit that uh, the work within the milestones. But sometimes you can push one milestone out and still keep your last milestone for your delivery in the right place. So you're still delivering on time, but you're just modifying when the work will be done within your company. But there's many tools to make this uh, visible to you in ProLice and give you a clear overview. 
and then you can you know it allows you to make the decisions necessary from there maybe outsourcing is an option as well then you can remove that task set it to a different resource so there's so many tools and options that that can be really uh, exerted and a clear overview of the end result before you actually commit to changing anything mm -hmm. and obviously right right through that COVID 19 pandemic here obviously uh automated scheduling makes it a lot easier to kind of figure out and keep everything on track correct well that's it exactly as your resources drop out you can uh, you know adjust your schedule with one click again and it's uh, sure beats doing it with excel sheets because excel sheets you're always when you try to recover a schedule then you're always missing maybe a step or a dependency during that that manufacturing process so mm -hmm. uh, a huge tool for COVID-19 yeah okay there's uh, just one more question that came in there's a whole bunch of questions that came actually in during the course here still too some of it we answer uh, afterwards because we don't have all the time uh, available but the uh, last question here is how is the skills matrix for the employees how is that being input or how is that even updated as the skills progress from some of these uh, employees? That's a great question, actually, yeah. Uh, this is, again, an interface that can be tied to your workforce management software. If you are already uh, creating skills matrix, or we can interface uh, with a, an Excel sheet even to import an Excel sheet, if that's how you're tracking your skills matrix in your company. And again, we, we have the opportunity of doing it right in ProLice. And it's not something that you have to, you know, contact us to change. Usually we'll have a, a key user within your company for ProLice that has the ability and the, the role to be able to, uh, to update and change skills as they progress. Because as we know, we're always training people and it's very important to be able to keep those skills up to date. And it allows uh, flexibility in their capacities as well. So, great question. Yeah. Okay. There's uh, one more, and uh, there's just, uh, and this is more from uh, a gentleman from overseas. He's trying to uh, figure out who is potentially uh, selling the product in India. Uh, Babu, we're, we're getting in touch with you so that you can get additional information uh for this and we'll make that available to you but uh we want to thank all of you for joining in this particular webinar we hope that this was interesting to you that it gave you some ideas of how you can manage your resources and how you can manage your scheduling especially during this time in, of COVID-19 uh, as we're still managing our way through this uh, if you want to get some additional information about ProLice and what we do uh, with this particular product uh, get to uh, go to our website at tabis.com you see the link here of how uh, where you can find a lot of this information get in touch with us directly at tabis america if you're over here in the us or also with our dear friends over in the uk and get in touch with our friends paul skelly over at tabis uk or in at tabis germany and some of the other represent, uh, representative offices in your country we thank you uh, for this. If there's any additional questions that you still have after this webinar, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to show you the cap capability of ProLice, how it can change your operation and how it, you can benefit with uh, additional efficiencies and additional benefits from the system. Anything else from you, Marty? No, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, if you have any questions, yeah, send them uh, our way and we'd be happy to help you out and answer them. Excellent. Well, thank you all. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the week and a, a wonderful weekend there as well. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.